Hi, this is Scott Hanselman, and this is an ASP.NET MVC Preview 3 introduction screencast. If this is the first screencast you've ever seen, then this is a good time to jump in. If you have seen some ASP.NET MVC screencasts before, then some of this may feel repeated to you. But there's been a number of interesting changes since the first two previews. We want to give people a good introduction to what's going on, even though they may not have necessarily been following the story this far. After you've installed ASP.NET MVC Preview 3, You'll notice that it is installed in Program Files, Microsoft ASP.NET. We go in here to the Assemblies folder, we see that there are three assemblies, Abstractions, MVC, and Routing. These are not put in the GAC right now. Uh, they're bin deployable, so that's why they're put here for your uh, referencing. We start up a copy of Visual Studio. I'll say File, New Project. We see that ASP.NET MVC Web Application has been added as a project template. If I hit OK, I get the option to create a unit test project. This combo box is really important because this is an opportunity for the community to get in there. If you uh, make a unit testing framework or if you prefer NUnit or MBUnit or CSUnit or some other unit like XUnit.NET, you can get into that combo box. And uh, if you have a favorite unit testing framework, it's probably already available inside of that combo box. As soon as you install that framework, it will appear within there. I'm going to hit OK. And then our application looks just like any other web application, except our references are set ahead of time. You can see that our abstractions, MVC, and routing have been referenced from that folder, and they're going to be copied local. If I right click, you can see that they're set as copy local and they're being referenced out of that assemblies folder. This will make it a lot easier for you to use MVC applications in shared hosting environments. There are three folders that you may not be familiar with controllers, models, and views by default, and the content folder in this case has the CSS. Our Hello World application has a little bit more information than a typical Hello World application has in the past. We hit F5, we'll see what that looks like by default. If we hover in the navigation area here, if you look in the status bar, you can see that this URL refers to slash home slash about, while this one refers to just slash. It's interesting to point out that there's no .aspx extensions that are appearing in this, in this application's address bar. Where is that message, welcome to ASP.NET MVC, coming from? This index method that I'll put a breakpoint on and run the application again is going to magically get called for us. If we look at our call stack, we see that it, it appears that index has just been called. So someone created a home controller and someone called index for us. If we right click in here and say show external code, we can look in the call stack and we see that it was actually MVC that did that work. How did we end up here in home controller index? In our global ASA, we've set up a route. And the route is the thing that maps URLs to controllers. In this case, since we had said slash home slash index, we showed up on the home controller and the index method. But remember also that if we say just slash, we still ended up on home and index. That's because we set up defaults. These are the defaults that the default controller is home and the default action is index. If I add an additional method, call it foo, put a breakpoint there and run it. Here's index. But if I said slash foo, I end up in the foo 
public method inside of Home Controller. I'll put some information in my view data. And this is the point where you would call your model. Your model might be web services, it might be a database, but this is the point where you get the information. You pass it onto the view, we return view, and then we get this interesting yellow screen of death. Notice that it's saying the view foo could not be located at these paths, and it actually tells us in the order in where it's looking for a view. It's looking for foo.aspx in a number of places. Change this to say we want to show the index view. Run it again. Rather than using the one that's going to pick, be picked by convention, we'll use a view that we'll decide on. So now, slash home slash foo works and reuses the index view. So it's this relationship between these models, controllers, and views uh, that makes AMVC so interesting. You can have shared views, or in this example, I've got a shared master page since we're using web forms for our views. I can have per controller views, I can have shared views, I can have master pages that use views. When passing information into a view, I can pass the model along for the ride. I can pass strongly typed view data. Or as in this example, I can use an iDictionary to pass information back and forth between the controller and the view. This information was pulled out of the view data, just like this. Take a look at some of the older videos that we've done on ASP.NET MVC for more information. The more baked that ASP.NET MVC gets, the more screencasts we'll be doing to explain all of the nuances of ASP.NET MVC. Thanks a lot. We'll see you next show.